Today we're doing another install video on a WJ rear four link lawn arm system. We've had a lot of requests for this video. These, these kits are selling really well. This is a 99 to 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee. And this is our rear four link lawn arm upgrade. Upgrade meaning you already have the lift kit, you already have springs and shocks and an entire lift kit. We're just upgrading from short arms to long arms. First step is to assemble your control arms. We're going to need hardware kit 127, that's the flex ends, and hardware kit 65 is the clamping bolts. So I'm going to put the flex ends in, I've already put the male ends in, I put some anti-seize compound on the threads and threaded this in. Next, next we're going to assemble the flex end. Alright, I've got a washer and a race, two bolts just to hold it all together, a little bit of multi-purpose grease. Grease, a little bit of grease on the ball. I'm only greasing the mating surfaces. A light coat is all you need. Any extra grease is just going to push out anyway. Washer. All right, first I'm going to torque them all to 70 inch pounds. I'm going to go in a crisscross pattern, just like torquing your lug nuts. Next I'm going to torque them to 85 inch pounds. All right, next is your clamping bolts. Harbor kit 65. I'm going to leave them loose for now. Next is to adjust the length. Okay, 39 inches center to center is your starting point. Because they're the same diameter, we can go 39 inches right edge to right edge. It's just easier to measure that way. Now I'm gonna snug these up just a little bit, just to hold it together while we're working on it. Make sure they're lined up flat, and then snug them up just a little bit. Install the grease circ. The grease circ facing down. This is the way it goes in the Jeep. The bend is up for ground clearance. Grease circ facing down for easy access. The upper control arms have already been adjusted to 30 inches center to center. There, everything's ready to go in. We take these little tiny tires off and we're gonna throw them right in the trash. <laughs> Next, we're gonna cut off the exhaust between the catalytic converter, which is right about here, where it's supposed to be, and the muffler, so I'm gonna cut it right here. All right, we've got our subframe in position. To center it up, you just eyeball it. There's a hole in the subframe and a hole in the Jeep, and you just line them up by eyeball. If you have the 242 HD transfer case, that's the heavy duty 242 with the 32 spline output. Uh, the output on it's a lot longer, so it moves this little harmonic balancer back a couple inches, and that could cause some interference between the harmonic balancer and your subframe. So the best option is to get a new drive shaft without the harmonic balancer. We do make a hack and tap for that transfer case. So you can use a double cardan CV. It's easy to install. You just cut the end of your shaft off, tap it, and put a new yoke on provided by us. And then a new double cardan CV drive shaft. Um, if you really want to keep your harmonic balancer, 
you can relocate this a little bit to clear it. We've got everything lined up, jack stand holding the subframe in place. Now it's time to drill our five mounting holes on each side. All right, for ease of installation, you're gonna to wanna to make these holes just slightly oversized. We've drilled our holes, we've taken the subframe down and touched up the paint. So now we're gonna put our hardware in. These two pairs of holes get nut plates, bolts and washers. This individual hole over here gets a regular nut. All right, these nut plates do take a little bit of patience, but I'm just snugging them up right now, and we're gonna come back later with a torque wrench and torque them to spec. Our subframe is installed, torque to spec. Uh, we have no exhaust, but if you were in a pinch and you had to drive the Jeep, you could drive it this way. You just need to put a turn down on the exhaust. We're gonna remove the A-arm, and a jack stand under the pinion will take all the load off the A-arm. Next up, we are going to disconnect our brake hoses and our e-brake cables from the A-arm. The A-arm's been removed from the axle side. It's ready to pull out. Now you don't have to have a really cool adjustable Craftsman pry bar, but it helps. <laughs> Next up, we are installing our four link bracket. Three M14 bolts. Again, I'm not actually tightening with the impact, I'm just snugging them up, and we're going to tighten them with the torque wrench. Uh, we're torquing these bolts to 100 foot pounds. We've installed our upper control arms. They go in with the bend facing down to clear the floor, and the adjustable male end is at the axle side. Next up, we're gonna pull out our lower control arms and put the new ones in. Lower control arms are gonna use two steel spacer washers to push the lower control arm in towards the center of the Jeep. I always put the rubber bushing side in first. It seems a little easier to line it up that way. The flex end, I can maneuver it around and make sure it's aligned before I slide it into the bracket. Next up, we're gonna install our coil spring retainers. To do that, we need to take out the coil springs. So I'm gonna take out the shock just to let the axle droop a little bit more. I've got jack stands under the axle to support it. Normally we have to drill and tap this hole. Since this is an overland, I suspect, there's these little uh, factory bump stop spacers in it. So we're just gonna take that bolt out and bolt the new air in its place. Uh, lift heights above four and a half inches or so will need these. Uh, lift heights below that won't have a long enough shock so the coil spring won't unload, you won't need these. Um, we've drilled these out with the 23 64 drill bit. We've tapped them with the 7 16 14 hand tap and now we're gonna bolt these in. While you have your coil springs out, it's a great time to make some adjustments. Uh, one thing that you're going to need to adjust is these lower control arm mounts. You're going to need to bend it in just a little bit. A large crescent wrench works well for this, or a big hammer. Just bend it in a little bit to clear the lower control arm. Um, another thing to adjust is your axle, left to right. Make sure it's centered under the Jeep. So I've taken our handy dandy alignment tools. A uh, regular straight edge would work equally well. And we're just measuring from the coil spring pad 
to the edge right here. And we're just gonna check if it's the same on both sides and adjust the length of the upper control arms until that's the same. The next adjustment you're gonna to wanna to make is centering the axle front to rear. So you bolt your tire on, center it up in your wheel well. You can see we decided we're just gonna trim a little bit on the rear. We could also adjust it forward if we wanted to, but we don't wanna do any trimming on the front side because it's sheet metal. This is just plastic, it's easier to trim. Um, so we're gonna leave it centered just where it is and trim the plastic to match. The way to adjust your axle front to rear is by adjusting the length of the lower control arms. Once you have your front to rear set, then you're gonna set your pinion angle. The way to adjust your pinion angle is by adjusting your upper control arms. Adjust them both by the same amount. To measure your pinion angle, we've got the vehicle set to exact ride height. This is the exact height it'll be when it's sitting on the ground. You just take a measurement like so. Make sure this flat surface is flat against your pinion. And that's your pinion angle. You're gonna to wanna to take the same measurement. This flat surface of the transfer case is where you measure your transfer case output angle. And in this style, with a single U-joint and a single U-joint, you're gonna want those measurements to be equal. So you adjust your pinion angle until it's equal to your transfer case output. So we've set the Jeep at exact ride height. The reason we did that is because when we torque the rubber bushings in the control arms, we want the Jeep to be at ride height. Rubber bushings don't pivot, they just flex. So as you're driving down the road, they flex. That's why you want them set at normal ride height when you tighten the bolts. Torque spec on these is 120 foot-pounds. Next, we need to put the shocks back in, put the springs back in, put the tires back on. We're gonna double check all of the clearances with the e-brake cables, the brake hose, the ABS wires. Make sure everything clears and has enough room to flex full articulation in both directions. Uh, if you don't have a forklift, you might wanna do that now while you have your springs and shocks out. You can just manually flex it to full articulation either way. All of our control arms are adjusted to length. Now I'm going to tighten down the clamping bolts. No torque spec needed on these. Just torque them good and tight. Go back and forth a few times until they're both nice and tight. Next up, double check that your e-brake cables, your ABS wires, your brake hose, and your breather tube are all long enough. Right now the axle is sitting at full droop, meaning it's hanging by the shocks alone. And that is your worst case scenario for all of these items. So as long as you have clearance right now, you'll have clearance on the trail. All right, so we flexed it out with the forklift. We love to do this just for fun every time we install a new long arm kit. Uh, it's about 32 inches off the ground. And the only thing holding this Jeep back is the length of the shocks. So a little more lift height, is that about four inches of lift height? A little more lift height, we can get some longer shocks in there and get a lot more flex out of it. It's got long arms front and rear now, so on the trail, this thing's gonna perform awesome. All right, our installation's all wrapped up. We took it for a drive on the highway, and it drives down the highway just fabulous. So much more stable than it was before, so much more control. Compared to those factory worn out rubber bushings, what a difference it made. Um, this is just an awesome kit. It's uh, high ground clearance, converts it from an A-arm to a four link for the ultimate in adjustability and ultimate in axle swappability. Uh, just works great on the road, off the road, just an awesome kit overall.